For our second lesson in module 13, we're going to be looking at the volume of cones. And our goal with this lesson is to demonstrate how to find the volume of a cone. Now, for the definition of a cone, we'll say that it is a three-dimensional figure with one vertex that is perpendicular to a circular base. And in order to draw a cone, what we'll do is we'll start off with a oval again, kind of like with a cylinder, with a center of that oval, and then we'll put a single dot directly above the dot that we made in the base. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a line from the vertex to the base, and then we'll add a line again from the vertex to the base, and that is how we get our cone. Now the volume formula for a cone is very similar to the volume for a cylinder. In fact, if you take a cone and a cylinder with the same radius for the base and the same height of the object, the volume of a cone will be one-third that of the volume of a cylinder. And so that's actually going to be important to our formula for the volume of a cone. It's going to be V is equal to one-third times pi r squared h. So if you remember from volume of a cylinder, this part here without this one-third is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. But when you're taking the volume of a cone, you have to take the volume of a cylinder and basically divide by three or multiply by one-third. And that is how we get the volume of our cone. So let's take a look at a few examples to see some examples. For our first example, we're told to find the volume of the cone below. And from our diagram, we should see that the radius of this cone is going to be 4 inches, and the height of this cone is going to be 9 inches. So we go to V is equal to 1 third pi r squared h. And we're going to take our radius, which is 4, substitute in for r, our height, which is 9, substitute it in for h. So we're going to get v is equal to 1 third pi times 4 squared times 9. Now we go ahead and we square our 4 following our order of operations. We square our 4 first, giving us v is equal to 1 third pi times 16 times 9. Now for our next line of work, we're going to get, again get our exact volume. And to get that, we're going to multiply 1 third times 16 times 9. We'll multiply all three of these numbers together, the 1 third, the 16, and the 9. And so when we multiply those together, we get V is equal to 48 pi, and that's going to be inches cubed, and that's going to be our exact volume. Our exact volume is going to be 48 pi inches cubed, and now to get our approximate volume, our approximate volume, use your calculator, hit 48 pi in your calculator, and if your calculator gives you an answer of 48 pi, you need to change the mode down to classic. If you're not sure how to do that, come see me for help. I'd be happy to help you out with that. But when we take 48 times pi, we're going to get 150.8 inches cubed. All right, so our exact volume is 48 pi inches cubed, and our approximate volume is going to be 150.8 inches cubed. Let's take a look at another one. Second example, we have a cone that is laying on its side. The base of the cone has a diameter that is 5 centimeters, and the height of the cone is going to be 4 centimeters. So if the diameter of the cone is equal to 5 centimeters, that tells us that the radius should be 2.5 centimeters. All right, so we need, we need this radius value more than we need the distance value or the diameter value. So, we go back to our formula. 
d is equal to one third pi r squared h and we substitute in the values that we need so v is equal to one third pi times 2.5 squared times 4. All right, substitute 2.5 in for r, substitute 4 in for the height. First step is to square the 2.5, and we get v is equal to 1 third pi times 6.25, that's 2.5 squared, times 4. So this 2.5 squared is equal to 6.25, that's where that came from. Now we go ahead and for our exact volume we're going to take 1 third times 6.25 times 4. And when we do that, we get V is equal to 8 and 1 third pi centimeters cubed. If you want to write that as an improper fraction, that'd be fine. So that would be V is equal to 25 over 3 pi centimeters cubed. All right, but that's our exact volume. For our approximate volume, again, that's exact. For our approximate volume, we're going to take 8 and 1 third, multiply it by 3.14159, multiplying it by pi, and we get v is equal to 26.2 centimeters cubed. So again, take this, 8 and 1 third, multiply it by pi in your calculator, and you will get 26.2, approximately 26.2 centimeters. Let's take a look at one more example. For our third and final example, we're told to find the approximate volume of the mountain. And this has got to be one of my best drawings that I have ever done in my life, the picture of a mountain. And I'll just go ahead and tell us that we're actually looking at the dimensions for Mount Everest, one of the tallest, if not the tallest mountains on Earth, which has a height of 8.8 .8 kilometers and a diameter of an astounding 32.2 kilometers for the, for the diameter of the base of that mountain. So, if we're going to find the volume, first we need to find the radius. So for the radius, we're going to take half of the diameter, so half of 32.2. The radius is going to be 16.1 kilometers. So we're going to use that information along with the height to find the total volume of Mount Everest. So we're looking at, again, V is equal to 1 third pi r squared h, and substituting in 16.1 for r and 8.8 .8 for h, we get V is equal to 1 third times pi times 16.1 squared times 8.8. .8. Going to go ahead and for our next step, we're going to square 16.1 giving us 259.21, so we'll use all that information in our formula. V is equal to 1 third pi times 259.21 times 8.8. .8. No, the directions again said to find the approximate volume of the mountain. So we're not so worried about exact volume here. So all we're going to do is on our calculator, we're going to take one third, multiplied by pi, multiplied by 259.21, multiplied by 8.8. .8. So we're multiplying these four things together in our calculator. And when we multiply those four things together, we will get V is equal to 2,000, 2,300 and 88.7 kilometers cubed. So 2,388.7
cubic kilometers is the total volume of Mount Everest. That is a lot of volume. All right. So just a quick real world example of how we can find or how we can use the volume of a cone to help us find volume of mountains or things like that. So again, that's our look at lesson 13.2, volume of cones. Hopefully you're now able to demonstrate how to find the volume of a cone and just as a recap, to find to draw a cone, you're going to draw a oval with a dot in the middle with a dot directly above that dot in the middle here and then you're going to add a line over on this side and you will add a line over on this side and that will give you your diagram or your picture of a cone. Any questions, comments, concerns, please write those down and we can go over those together in class tomorrow.